right so what is the need for uh, uh, incorporating rotation uh, in the vibrational spectra the reason is listen the uh, lines that appear in low resolution ir spectroscopy if you take row low resolution ir spectra ir spectrum of a diatomic molecule okay and if you plot intensity versus frequency you will get uh, a line for uh, uh, first hot transition and you will get highly intense line for uh, fundamental transition 0 to 1 then you will get lines for first overtone second overtone third overtone like that okay this is the this is the this is supposed to be the spectrum if you take spectrum with the low resolution spectrometer but nowadays we have lot of sophisticated instrument high resolution spectrometers are available if you use high resolution spectrometer then each line here okay they are actually consists of many 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 lines okay we are going to focus mainly on fundamental vibrational transition why because that line is highly intense since the line is highly intense okay uh, it is easy to understand the uh, many lines that actually forms this line whereas the first two over hot transition first two overtone second overtone these trans these lines okay they also appear with many many lines but the problem is the intensity of those lines are very very small so uh, it is very difficult to understand the uh, the lines right uh, the, uh, the many many lines that appear okay for uh, first overtone second overtone third overtone and all it's difficult so we are going to focus mainly on fundamental transition so in high resolution spectrometer if you use high resolution spectrometer and if you take the spectrum high, res high resolution IR spectrum if you take for a diatomic molecule each line will actually appear say for example 0 to 1 transition fundamental line how the fundamental line will actually appear it appears with many many lines like this I'll just draw schematically it's a schematic picture right you'll get lines like this right for 0 to 1 transition we'll get a line like this okay uh, right if you combine all these things you'll get some something look like a peak but with high resolution you'll get many 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 lines now the question is how to understand the appearance of many many lines okay in the fundamental vibrational transition 0 to 1 okay how to understand this okay see so far see for, for this uh, low resolution spectrum to understand this low, low, low resolution spectrum for a diatomic molecule we considered only the vibrational transition okay uh, right if pure vibrational transition takes place yes based on pure vibrational transition you can explain all these things but to explain the appearance of many many lines for each of this line okay you require or you have to incorporate the rotational motion with the vibration okay so what we are going to do in order to understand this right in order to understand in order to understand the appearance of many lines the appearance of closely spaced lines closely spaced lines right for each uh, uh, line in the low resolution right we are going to incorporate okay incorporation incorporation of rotational motion motion right with vibration with vibration okay we are going to incorporate the rotational motion uh, with or into into vibration okay so we are going to uh, consider both rotational motion and vibrational motion for the diatomic molecule okay so that's why this spectrum is called as rotational vibrational spectra a rotation vibration spectra of diatomic molecule 
Okay, now what I am going to do, listen, I am going to assume initially. Let us assume, let us assume uh, the rotational motion and vibrational motion are are not interacting. Okay, assume that rotational motion, rotational motion, right, uh, and uh, vibrational motion, vibrational motion are not are not interacting with each other. Are not interacting. If rotational motion and vibrational motions are not interacting, then we can apply bone born Oppenheimer approximation. So, in this situation, born Oppenheimer approximation, born Oppenheimer approximation, right, is uh, is valid. Born Oppenheimer approximation is valid. So using born open approximation what we are going to say is that the total energy of the uh, vibrating molecule or uh, vibrating rotor total energy of the vibrating rotor i am going to write like this e it depends on vibrational quantum number v and also depends on the rotational quantum number j okay i am writing the total energy of the vibrating rotor Okay, so this energy depends on vibrational quantum number as well as rotational quantum number, right? What is the formula? The formula is this: e is equal to uh, rotational energy or vibrational energy in joules plus rotational energy in joules. Okay, this is the expression in joules. Now, what I'm going to do? See, here we have separated. The vibrational energy and rotational energy we have separated. This separation is possible only if vibration and rotation are non-interacting. Okay, if they are not interacting, then only you can use born open Oppenheimer approximation. According to born open Oppenheimer approximation, the total energy can be separated like this: vibrational energy plus rotational energy. This separation is allowed only if there is no interaction between rotation and vibration. Okay, yeah. As we go along in this lecture, I am going to in I am going to also consider okay the interaction between these two. That we'll discuss as we go along, right? Now, what is the energy in wave number? Because in sp in a vibrational spectroscopy, we normally express energy in terms of wave number. Okay, so energy in terms of wave number, I am going to represent with a symbol. Yes, these are all standard notation used in many standard books like Atkins, uh, Herzberg, okay, etc. Yes is nothing but total energy of vibrating rotor in wave number unit. Total energy of vibrating rotor in wave number unit, which is nothing but equal to energy of vibrational energy in wave number unit plus rotational energy in wave number unit which has which is f of j okay and you know very well the formula for uh, vibrational energy under un un unharmonicity condition or under un unharmonic condition is v plus half into omega e bar minus v plus half the whole square into x e into omega e bar so this is the formula for vibrational energy plus uh, for rotation, we have to consider um, the molecule as a non-rigid rotor. Okay, if you consider non molecule as non-rigid rotor, then you must introduce this formula that is Bj into j plus one, where B is in uh, wave number unit. Bj into j plus one uh, minus d j square into j plus one the whole square. Okay, this is the formula for rotational energy. In wave number unit, okay. You know very well V is nothing but vibrational quantum number, which can take value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Omega e bar is the equilibrium vibrational frequency. I have told you 
equilibrium vibrational frequency uh, this frequency is very well suitable if the vibrations right present or the vibration exists in lower levels okay under low vibration levels or in low vibration level the equilibrium vibrational frequency and the actual vibrational frequency they are exact they are close they are close okay yeah what you have to remember here is this is equilibrium vibrational frequency that's all xc is the xc is nothing but unharmonicity constant b you know very well it is rotational constant of the molecule and d is centrifugal distortion constant okay this is the actual uh, expression for total energy of vibrating rotor okay in wave number unit now observe this carefully this term that is the effect due to centrifugal distortion okay in the case of vibrating rotor students observe carefully if you take rotational spectrum this is very important but in the case of vibrational spectrum okay the effect of centrifugal distortion is very very small negligibly small so this term is negligible okay this the contribution of this term is very very small therefore i'm going to neglect that so if i neglect this what's the energy yes vj equal to uh, v plus half into omega e bar minus v plus half the whole square into xc into omega e bar this is the vibrational energy plus the rotational energy that is bj into j plus 1 where j is the rotational quantum number okay so this is the formula for total energy of vibrating rotor in wave number unit okay take note students up to this any doubt no sir good no sir okay let me continue now what i am going to do i have told you in the beginning we are going to focus only on the fundamental vibrational transition okay so how why fundamental trans vibrational transition appear with many lines okay so we are going to focus on fundamental vibrational transition okay let us take fundamental vibrational vibrational transition okay we are going to focus only on this what is this what is fundamental vibrational transition v equal to 0 to v equal to 1 this is fundamental transition okay now what is the energy required for uh, for this vibrational transition what is the energy required right what is the formula energy required for for the fundamental transition for the for the transition for the transition v equal to 0 to v equal to 1 okay is equal to let me write like this delta s okay s is the total energy of the vibrating rotor delta s is nothing but uh, the change in uh, energy or the energy required okay for this transition right under vibrating rotation or vi under vibration rotation okay delta s is equal to delta g for 0 to 1 transition plus during this transition many many rotational transition will occur let me just put delta f okay during this fundamental vibrational transition many 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 rotational transitions will occur so i'll put generally delta f and you know very well delta s is equal to energy required for transition delta s is equal to delta j well delta g what is delta g for fundamental delta g for fundamental is omega e bar into 1 minus 2 xe okay we have discussed this okay in the in our regular class right omega e bar into 1 minus 2 xe this is the energy required for fundamental vibrational transition plus we have 
delta F okay that is energy required for um, uh, for the rotational transition right so here we are going to consider the energy rotational energy for the uh, higher rotational state let me represent that as J prime minus energy for the lower rotational state J double prime students observe carefully this is rotational energy for the final rotational state this is rotational energy for the initial rotational state J prime is final state J double prime is initial state okay now what I'm going to do for fundamental transition anyway this is constant this quantity is a constant so let me represent this, uh, that as omega naught bar this entire quantity I'll replace this quantity by omega naught bar I'm going to call this as band origin it is called band origin it is the band it is the origin or the center it is the center for the fundamental vibration transition okay so let me uh, take this value as omega naught bar plus what is f of j what is the formula you know very well f of j is equal to bj into j plus 1 so rotational constant b into j prime into j prime plus 1 okay minus then for f of j double prime I'll write like this bj bj double prime into j double prime plus 1 right so this is the formula we are going to use okay to understand the appearance of many lines okay the appearance of many lines in the fundamental vibrational transition okay this is the formula we are going to use so remember this formula very important right and here students observe carefully j prime is the final rotational state j double prime is the initial rotational state okay and b is rotational constant if rotation and vibration are non interacting students observe carefully if rotation and vibration are non interacting then b is a constant for all the vibrational states b is a constant in all vibrational states okay so keep that point in mind as we go along i'll give more information about that okay yeah uh, students so far any doubt any doubt no sir okay right so remember this is the uh, formula for energy okay energy required for the transition now let us uh, apply the selection rule for uh, 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 for uh, rotation vibration spectrum or uh, uh, IR spectrum of vibrating rotor okay let us continue so this is the energy required for transition now what is the selection rule what is the selection rule selection rule okay as usual uh, dipole moment should change because it is an it is purely uh, IR spectra okay so uh, for IR spectrum the dipole moment should change during vibration okay dipole moment should change during vibration okay this is called gross selection rule and what is the specific selection rule okay specific selection rule is this delta V change in vibrational quantum number since we have utilized unharmonic condition delta V can be plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 etc etc so 0 to 1 0 to 2 0 to 3 all are allowed and what about delta J okay we have assumed uh, the uh, rotor as a uh, non rigid rotor so here delta j 0 and delta j plus or minus 1 are allowed okay these two are allowed very important keep this in mind in the case of uh, if vibration and rotation are non interacting then the selection rule for delta j is just 0 and plus or minus 1 okay take note this is the selection rule this is gross selection rule and this is specific selection rule right now uh, students here I like to give one important information keep this in mind 
spectroscopy scopist okay spectro spectroscopist they gave symbols for each branch of lines okay see here uh, i have told you at the beginning that that uh, this fundamental line will appear with many many lines so this is one branch this is another branch you will get branch of lines okay to understand these branch of lines in an uh, in an easier manner okay spectroscopist they gave symbols for these branches okay what are the symbols we are using the symbols are given based on the value of delta j based on the value of delta j okay delta j if it is minus 2 then the symbol that we use is o if delta j is minus 2 then all those lines are called o lines or that branch is called o branch o branch lines okay delta j minus 2 if delta j is minus 1 we call those lines as p branch lines if delta j equal to 0 it is called q branch line if delta j equal to plus 1 it is called r branch line if delta j equal to plus 2 then those lines are called s branch lines okay so we have o branch p branch q branch r branch and s branch lines okay now in our case in our case we have just delta j 0 delta j plus 1 and delta j minus 1 so what are the branches of lines possible here p Students? q and r o uh, yeah p delta j minus p. 1 means p delta j 0 means q delta j plus 1 means r so in our case we are going to get only these p q r branch lines okay uh, is this clear students any doubt right now listen students here here p and r branch lines p and r branch lines lines are more common they are more common for uh, most molecules whereas q branch line yes the selection rule is allowed delta j0 is allowed but q branch line q branch lines appear when they will appear appear only if only if the ground electronic state only if the ground electronic state state is other than is other than sigma state students observe carefully if the ground electronic state electronic state okay uh, i taught you how to identify the term symbols for uh, diatomic molecule okay if the ground electronic state is sigma state okay then uh, uh, then we'll never discuss about q branch line okay if it is other than sigma state see other than right if the ground electronic state is other than sigma state then only we uh, talk about the q branch line okay so common lines are p and r right take down this is this clear student any doubt here any doubt then sir branch branch Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. We are going to discuss. Yes, we are going to discuss. It is it is based on the selection rule. Okay, we are going to discuss that. Okay, I'll tell you. It's very simple one. Right? Up to this, any doubt? Up to this? These are all standard uh, uh, symbols given by spectroscopist. Okay. what I'm going to do we are going to focus only on the fundamental vibrational transition students observe observe this carefully it's a very very important one we are going to focus on uh, fundamental vibrational transition right see here uh, assume that this is the energy axis energy axis right and these are all rotational levels students observe carefully these are all rotational levels rotational levels 
we have many rotation levels these are rotation levels associated with the ground vibrational state i repeat these lines indicate rotational states or rotational levels associated with the ground vibrational state similarly we'll be having rotational states we'll be having many rotational states associated with the v equal to 1 vibration state okay so this is these are all rotational levels associated with the ground vibration state and these are all rotational levels associated with the first excited vibration state so our focus is this transition okay 0 to 1 transition but during 0 to 1 transition vibrational transition many many rotational transition occurs that's what we are going to focus now okay now listen carefully Mm. see here students uh, these are all rotational levels associated with the ground vibrational state let me represent these rotation level with the symbol j double prime so this is j double prime zero state this is one two three like that we have many many uh, rotational states <coughs> students observe carefully i am representing the rotational states of ground vibrational state using the symbol j double prime j double prime 0 1 2 3 etc similarly the rotational states of higher vibrational state i'll represent that as j prime j prime 0 1 2 3 etc okay lower vibrational states see rotational states associated with the lower vibration level i am representing using the symbol j double prime j double prime 0 j double prime 1 j double prime 2 j double prime 3 like that and rotational states associated with the first exit vibration state i am representing that as j prime okay students any doubt up to this any doubt no sir hmm? yeah no sir now listen listen student uh, let me write delta j minus 1 this side and delta j plus 1 this side Delta J minus 1 corresponds to which branch line will get for delta J minus 1? P. P branch. Okay. For delta J minus 1, we get P branch. P branch. Very good. For delta J plus 1? R branch. We get R branch. Okay. See, for P branch, delta J should be minus 1. What is delta J? Higher rotational state minus lower rotational state. Am I right? Now listen, listen, student. I'll I'll just draw a line here. You try to tell me what is the delta J for this. Final state is zero. Initial state is one. Zero minus one. Minus one. Minus one. So you'll get delta J minus one. Correct. So this line zero one to zero line. 1 to 0 this is the first p line first p branch line i'll represent that as p1 so students this is very important first p branch line never starts from j double prime 0 keep that in mind because selection rule will never allow that so selection rule is delta j minus 1 okay to get delta j minus 1 initial rotation state number should be higher uh, final rotation state number should be lower okay therefore first line starts from j double prime 1 to j double prime z j single prime 0 is this clear student any doubt so during this vibrational transition okay many rotational transition occur this is one rotational transition okay with the selection rule delta j minus 1 now students observe carefully what is the delta j for this Yes, one. Minus one. Correct. Final state is one. Initial state is two. So one minus two is minus one. So this is also a p branch line. I'll represent this as p two. Second p branch line because first p branch line starts from one. Second p, uh, p branch line starts from two. Similarly, see this. I'm very sorry. Yeah, here to here, here to here. Mm. What is this line? Final is 2, initial is 3. 
two minus three. Third P branch. Yeah, that is third P branch line. Like that, we have many, 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 many lines, right? Okay, you'll get P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, etc., etc. Many P branch, many uh, lines, P lines will appear closely. So it is called a P branch. Is this clear? Because of the selection rule, you'll get this branch. Is this clear, student? Are you able to follow? Yes. Hmm? Good. Now, similarly, for R branch, see, R branch, I'll start from 0. Okay, 0 to uh, 1. Let me draw like this. 0 to 1. What is the delta J for this? Can anyone tell me what is delta J for this? Final state is 1, one right? Sir. Final state is 1. Initial state is 0. 1 minus 0? Plus 1. Ah, plus 1. So, this is the first R branch line. The point that you have to note here is, first P branch line starts from J double prime 1. Whereas, first R branch line starts from J double prime 0. Okay? Then, second R branch line. Okay, see here, the final state is 2, initial state is 1, 2 minus 1 is plus 1. <coughs> right, this is second R branch line. And this is uh, third R branch line, R3. Like that, we'll get many, 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 many R lines. Because, why we, are ca why we call these as R lines? Because delta J for these lines is plus 1. That's why these lines are called R lines. And uh, you'll get a bunch of R lines, so it is called R branch lines. Similarly, you'll get a bunch of P lines, we call those bunch as P branch lines. Is this clear, student? Any doubt? No, Students, please. any doubt? No doubt, sir. Okay. No, sir. Now, keep this in point, keep this point in mind. First P branch line starts at Starts at J double prime. J double prime? One. Sir. One. Very good. First R branch line starts at? Zero. Sir. Ah. J double prime. Uh, listen, listen, student. Uh, just, to, uh, just to make some clarity here, I'll put zero here so that you'll get little more clarity in that. Why I put zero? First R branch line, uh, I'll put J R double ah, It starts from J double prime zero. That's why. It starts from J double point zero, so I'll put R zero. R zero is the first line. Then R one, then R two, then R three. You'll get many many lines. Whereas under P branch, P starts from one. There is no P zero line because P first line of P starts from one and ends with zero. So one to zero. Clear, students? Is this clear? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Take note. Take note. Right. Now, we are going to see the frequency of these spectral lines. Right? Take note. Next heading. Frequency of these spectral lines. At what frequency all these lines will appear? Pre branch line, R branch line. At what frequency they appear? Students, observe this carefully. This is very important. I am talking about only the fundamental transition. Okay? In, in a fundamental vibrational transition, Many, many rotational transition takes place. You will get P branch lines, you will get R branch lines. These P branch, R branch lines are rotational lines. These rotational lines appear as a bunch and that bunch, okay, in low resolution, appear as a single line. We call it as fundamental vibrational line. Okay, take down. Now, <coughs> let me go to the uh, energy formula. So, what is the frequency of the spectral line? Frequency of spectral lines. Frequency of spectral lines. Right? You know very well, in spectroscopy, uh, frequency we represent as nu bar. Okay? Actually, wave number, but uh, for wave number also, wave, wave number also we call it as uh, frequency. Okay. So, at what radiation frequency or what radiation 
frequency is absorbed okay or will absorb for a particular uh, rotational transition okay so we are going to focus on frequency of the spectral line frequency of the spectral line is nothing but energy required for transition in wave number okay so nu bar equal to delta s therefore nu bar equal to omega naught bar okay omega naught bar is nothing but the band origin then we have the formula b into i have given the formula already j prime into j prime plus 1 minus j double prime into j double prime plus 1 correct students is this formula correct energy required for transition yes, yeah frequency of the spectral line is nothing but energy required for transition in wave number okay now students observe carefully for p branch okay for p branch for p branch you know you know very well for p branch what is delta j minus 1 delta j should be Sorry. minus 1 you know very well delta j is nothing but j single prime minus j double prime am i right delta j is nothing but j single prime j single prime is the final state j double prime is the initial state so j prime minus j double prime will give you minus 1 or we can also write this as j single prime equal to j double prime minus 1 am i right am i right student is this clear students is this clear Yes, sir. so what I'm going to do in this formula wherever j prime is there you put j double prime minus 1 okay so what we get is frequency for p branch line frequency for p branch line that is at what radiation frequency the p branch or p uh, transition will occur okay or at what radiation at what frequency p branch line will appear in the spectrum okay so for that okay I'm going to use this formula here so omega naught bar plus I'll keep this B as such wherever J prime is there you put this one J double prime minus 1 then here J double prime minus 1 and we have one one plus 1 is there already so minus 1 plus 1 cancel you'll get just J double prime and I'll keep this term as such J double prime into J double prime plus 1 students any doubt up to this up to this any doubt students no sir hmm? yeah now now what I'm going to do see here this is j double prime minus one I'll just put a bracket here so here we have a j double prime here we have j double prime so I'll take j double prime as common so what we get is omega naught bar plus b I'll take j double prime as common so we have j double prime minus one here minus uh, if you multiply by minus I'll get minus j double prime minus 1 here okay so this plus j double prime and minus j double prime cancel and you'll get minus 1 minus 1 become minus 2 minus 2 into this so you'll get minus 2b here so the frequency for p branch line equal to omega naught bar minus 2b into j double prime take down p branch line okay the frequency of p branch line right uh, this is the formula and uh, what are the possible value of j double prime for p branch student for p branch are these values allowed are all these values allowed for p branch zero is not allowed j double prime zero not is allowed. not allowed correct not allowed yeah so j double prime if i put j double prime one here if i put j double prime one here i'll get the first p branch line if you put j double prime two here i'll get the second p branch line okay and students observe carefully omega naught bar is the band origin and we are having minus sign here so if i put j double prime as one here then 1 into 2b is 2b so you have to subtract 2b from the band origin that means p branch line will appear 
okay in the lower frequency side of okay band origin p branch line will appear in the lower frequency side of band origin okay so keep that point in mind now in a similar manner i am going to discuss for r branch for r branch of lines okay for r branch you know very well delta j should be plus 1 delta j is nothing but j single prime minus j double prime which is equal to plus 1 or we can also write j prime single prime equal to j double prime plus 1 in the case of r branch now i'll put this j prime in the uh, energy formula or frequency formula so frequency of r branch line is equal to we have band origin omega naught bar plus we have the rotational constant in the formula then wherever j prime is there you put j double prime plus 1 so j double prime plus 1 then uh, we have j double prime plus j prime plus 1 in the formula so in the place of j prime if you put j double prime plus 1 plus 1 and another plus 1 is there so you will get j double prime plus 2 ok just uh, take the formula and uh, uh, just incorporate uh, j prime as j double prime plus 1 in the formula you will get this ok it's minus I'll keep j double prime term as such I'm not going to do anything ok students any doubt in this any doubt in this students no sir right now see here we have j double prime plus 1 here also we have j double prime plus 1 so I'm going to take j double prime plus 1 as common as a common term so omega naught bar plus uh, here we have b into j double prime plus 1 if I take double j double prime j double prime plus 1 as common then we have j double prime plus 2 here and here um, we have minus j double prime plus j double prime minus j double prime cancel so we'll get 2 here 2 into b 2b so we'll get omega naught bar plus 2b into j double prime plus 1 this is the frequency for r branch lines take note and uh, j double prime starts from in the case of r branch zero yeah it starts from 0 1 2 3 4 etc if you put j double prime as 0 here if you put j double prime 0 0 plus 1 1 1 into 2b is 2b listen you have to add 2b plus is there right you have to add 2b to the band origin so where it will appear our branch line students where it will appear higher frequency of um, higher frequency. in the higher frequency side of band origin correct okay so this is the idea keep this in mind now i am going to plot this okay how the spectrum will look like for the fundamental transition 0 to 1 so uh, here intensity and uh, uh, in the x-axis I'm going to plot frequency radiation frequency from left to right let us assume that this is the band origin band origin students band origin usually does not appear okay because uh, Q branch lines are uh, usually absent or uh, usually uh, usually won't appear uh, for most uh, uh, diatomic molecules only for molecule for which the ground electronic state is non sigma state non sigma only for those molecule uh, the q branch line will come okay now we are going to focus only on p branch and r branch right listen p branch lines will appear in the lower frequency side of omega naught bar see here frequency increases from left to right okay so P branch line will appear in the lower frequency side R branch line will appear in a plus circle here, therefore R branch line will appear in the higher frequency side ok now listen student at what frequency first R branch line will appear can anyone tell me first R branch line at what frequency first R branch line will appear just put J double point 0 here if you put J double point 0 you will get first R branch line yes omega naught bar plus 2b correct this is omega naught bar you will get plus 2b in the right hand side so 
you will get the first R branch line. Okay, I'll put this is uh, this is R naught. First R branch line will appear. Okay, just to be higher frequency, right? To be higher frequency compared to omega naught bar. So this frequency, this frequency is omega naught bar plus two B, correct? This is omega naught bar. This frequency is omega naught bar frequency. So plus two B. So this is omega naught bar plus two B. Am I right? Yes. Second line, students. Second line. Put J double prime one here. Ah, uh, you will get plus four B. Four. Yes. Listen, from band origin four B. From band origin four B. From R zero. Two B. Two B. Two B. Two B. Two B. What about R two? R two. R two means put J double prime is two here. Six. Ah, uh, six B. So from R one, it is again two B, correct? So these lines will appear like that. R two, then R three. Okay, uh, it is just increasing intensity, increasing then decreases, then decreases like that. Okay, uh, don't think that only at R three the value increasing, the intensity is high. No, I have drawn, drawn uh, just for understanding purpose. I drawn like this. Okay, it may be R ten, it may be R twenty. depending depending upon the molecule okay and these are all the r branch lines r branch lines what is the distance between uh, adjacent r branch lines students adjacent line in r branch 2b very two good b. yeah the distance between adjacent r r branch line is 2b 2b okay take note what about p branch line students where first p branch line will appear let me show the formula here yeah this is the formula for p branch and the first j double prime value is 1 so if we put 1 here minus 2b ah, minus omega 2b omega not bar minus 2b see this is the frequency for omega not bar minus 2b means left hand side correct you have to subtract okay so first p branch line will appear okay with a gap of 2b here in the lower frequency side so this is first p branch line i'll put p1 Second P branch line. Put J double prime equal to two here. Minus four B. Ah, uh, minus four B. Minus four B from band origin, correct? Minus four B from band origin, or from P one it is two B, correct? From P one it is two B. Am I right, student? Is this clear? Then we yes, have P three line. We have P four line. Many many lines P three, P four, P five, P six like that, and the gap between adjacent line is two B always. So the gap between adjacent line in P branch and the gap between adjacent line in R branch are equal to. Okay, is equal to I'm sorry, is equal to two B. Is this clear, student? Any doubt? Any doubt? Yes, sir. Take two. What is the gap between first P branch line and first R branch line? Four B, sir. Four B. Four B. Yes. Note all these points. Note all these points. Okay. Students, is this clear? Any doubt? so by incorporating rotational motion we could explain why the fundamental transition 0 to 1 transition appear with many lines okay it appear with many lines because of many rotational transition occur uh, during the vibrational transition is this clear student any doubt is this clear sir yes R value of this over a certain point will increase or decrease as intensity. This is this is nothing but intensity. We'll discuss that as we go along, right? Okay. We are going to discuss that. We are going to discuss that. So listen, students. Here, uh, the gap between adjacent R line is two B, right? It is two B, two B, two B, two B, two B, two B. So, if you take the 
vibrational spectrum or IR spectrum of a diatomic molecule then the fundamental vibrational band if you analyze with a high resolution spectrometer you will get many 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 lines and we expect that the gap between adjacent line should be always 2B 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 correct am I right student am I right yes sir yes sir why because we have assumed that initially we have assumed that the rotation motion and vibration motion are not interacting if they are not interacting yes we should get lines with equal space okay and that is the spacing between R lines spacing between adjacent P lines it should be same it should be same but what happens in the actual spectrum or experimental spectrum in the experimental spectrum we never get like this okay if you take experimental uh, spectrum uh, if you analyze the experimental spectrum under high resolution uh, spectrometer using high resolution spectrometer for the fundamental transition 0 to 1 I am focusing only on fundamental transition okay so this is the uh, band origin omega naught bar right and you'll get R branch line in the higher frequency side P branch line in the lower frequency side, no doubt in that but student observe carefully what's happening here and what is happening in the left hand side see here students observe carefully can you tell me what is actually uh, uh, what actually appear here how does the spectrum appear here interact as a, sir interact as a sir real molecules listen in, uh, in the spectrum see these are all r branch line right? these are all r branch line these are all P branch. P branch line R branch line if you go to if you go to higher frequency side R branch line stores starts to converge correct they comes closer 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 right they converge okay here R branch lines converges converge R branch lines converge here what about here gap so to see the gap gap increasing that means here the lines are diverges okay here converges here diverges right so in the actual spectrum the experimental spectrum yes you get R branch line you get P branch line no doubt in that but in the actual spectrum as we go right to the higher frequency side of R branch okay the line starts to converge and uh, if you go the lower frequency side of P branch okay the line starts to diverge right this uh, this particular appearance could not be explained by by just rotation vibration spectra okay so in order to explain why the lines converge here and why the lines diverge here in order to explain that we are going to introduce okay or we are going to consider the interaction between rotation and vibration okay if you consider interaction between rotation and vibration then born open Heimer approximation become invalid this is what we call as breakdown of uh, born open Heimer approximation okay students up to this any doubt so this is what we are going to discuss in the next class okay what is mean by uh, uh, breakdown of Born Oppenheimer approximation, or you can also call it as rho vibrational spectra of diatomic molecule. Okay, so in the next class, we are going to discuss about rho vibrational spectra. If I use the term rho vibrational, that means rotation and vibration are interacting. Rho vibrational spectra of diatomic diatomic molecules. Okay, this is what we are going to discuss in the next class. Okay, yeah, I stop here, student. If you have any doubt, you can ask me now.